Peace and blessings, and welcome back to Heritage Hip Hop, where we invest in artists, not their playlists, which means you get the best of the best when the best comes to Heritage Hip Hop. And today, I have an MC that not only could be classified as the best, he's called the lyrical technician and the lyrical interpreter of music. Introduce yourself to the people. What's going on, everybody? I go by the name of Ray Pearson from the Boogie Down Bronx all the way to Hudson County. Yeah, it's a pleasure to get to talk to you face to face finally. Yeah. <laughs> Let's talk about it. Let's talk about your, your trek through hip hop. I called you the lyrical, you're like the lyrical translator because mm-hmm. beats have a language and MCs have to bring that language through with their rhymes. How do you tackle a beat to bring the language of the beat to the ears of the listener? Uh, I think mostly on the energy of the beat. I try to, when I, when I write, I try to compete with um, certain instruments used. So if I have a certain part that I really want to focus on, if there's a certain change in the beat and what I want to say resonates with the, the instrument brought in, then I'll make sure I build something around the main focus so that it's going head to head with the, with the instrument used, like maybe a piano breakdown or a horn, so I'll just make sure I craft whatever I'm writing to fall in place with the instrument used. But your technique is very lyrical. Yeah. And that's where many people fail because the lyric is just as much as an instrument as the beat itself. Right. So how do you place your voice so people know how to follow you as an artist and not just follow you because of your sound? I think it's all in how you deliver tone um, because you can't, you can't scream over what's being presented. You have to become one with what's being presented. And that's, what's going to give that's was now within that you may want to do something to stand out a little bit, but being a lyricist, that's it, it's the ability to, to write. Like I, as much as I'm a lyricist, I also like to consider myself a writer. And I try, and I love when I'm challenged, when the beat's challenging me, because it only makes the product better. Okay, so let's talk about challenges. Hmm. You, you, you claim two cities. You Hudson County, you claim, and right. you claim the Bronx, New York. Yes, sir. So the Bronx and New Jersey have two different styles. Yeah, and and there's and there's a significant change in how the styles are delivered. Right. Tell me about the Bronx and how the Bronx help craft part of your song. Well, when it comes to the Bronx, I think my sound is more of the Bronx. Um, with Jersey, and it's not to discredit Jersey because when I started rapping, I was living in Jersey City. Um. I don't really think as much. The only thing I could say as far as that's concerned is that I can flip any, if if I want to, I can do something that's Jersey catered um, because I'm a versatile artist. Um, I think my sound is mostly the Bronx. Um, I was born in the Bronx. I was, I was raised in the Bronx maybe half my life um, at the very beginning of it. Um, and with with the like 90 to 95 percent of my family s- still lives out there so i'm constantly still going to the bronx so it's not like i left the bronx and i never went back for anything i a lot of my family's over there so i'm always you know traveling to the bronx to see them and and with my cousins so i'm, I'm always out there it's just that my style and my sound is more new york than it, it is jersey it's just that I can't mention one without the other because this is where I picked up my pen. Okay. So I think you being a representative of both territories means mm-hmm. you have in your in your pot of hip hop, you have a little bit of spice that works together from both angles that makes the pot more, let's just say, tasteful. Mm. What did the Bronx sprinkle on jersey to make that side of you be bronx but what side did jersey sprinkle on the bronx to make you jersey 
Um, I would say the knowledge, what I saw growing up, um, what I saw around, what I saw around me in 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 my community neighborhood. What I that you know, I took out, I took from the Bronx what I saw, and what I got from Jersey is the maturity. Um, the me, you know, it humbling me because. You know, it's it's even though I'm in Jersey, if I turn my you know if I turn around, I'm facing the city. So it's like I still you're still like it's almost like looking out the window and knowing that everything outside your window is still there. No. So it's like I may be resting my head over here, but home is still across the water. Not that home isn't Jersey, right? Right. But you know, I come from where hip hop started. Yeah, I mean, it has two different identities because mm -hmm. the Bronx is a borough and Jersey is a territory. Right. So that's two different things. And I explain that to people all the time that if you look at the Game of Thrones, the Bronx would be a kingdom, but Jersey would be a land. It's two different understandings. Right. And, and when I look at the Bronx, after Terror Squad, unfortunately, lost their um shine after the death of Big Pun, mm -hmm. the, the Bronx kept being underground and people didn't elevate the Bronx. No. You know, and the Bronx really came back with Cardi B and her sound, but Chris Rivers also kept the bubble popping for the underground, right? Right. What have people been missing or what they what don't they see that keeps the Bronx very relevant when it comes to hip hop? That you said it, hip hop not to downplay everything that maybe Harlem and Queens and, and Brooklyn is doing. It's just that, and don't get me wrong, there are artists in the Bronx that are following the trend of what's hot now. It's just that the Bronx gets overlooked because it, the Bronx keeps to its roots. Mm. Meanwhile, all these other boroughs, and, and and this is not to say that there's no other artists in the other borough stick it to the roots, but it's it's just at one point I remember having this conversation at a at a point I was doing a song. I was like, Brooklyn's the strongest borough. With the at, at the time, not saying that they're not now, but at the time when I made that remark, mm -hmm. it's who was coming out of Brooklyn? Fab, Mano. Um, as far as 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 far as the, the the relevant artists in the game in New York at the time, Brooklyn was looking very strong. Mm -hmm. And you know, regardless of anything, when you think of hip hop, you think how far out it goes overseas. At the end of the day, when you open that chapter in the book of hip hop that all ties back to the Bronx. So we can, the Bronx could get overlooked, but it will never not be in the conversation because the, the roots started in the boogie down. And understanding that, that has to be sort of a burden or, or, or something that you got to walk in knowing that you hold part of that uh, story on your shoulders whenever you touch your mic. Right. Yeah, so, no, Definitely. I was listening to your song, The Mirror, when you talk about mm. you looking at yourself. Right. And when you look at yourself, we always look at ourselves to find our flaws, but we also find our opportunities and our victories at the same time. Yeah. Since you started rhyming, how has the Bronx been made better within you, not just as a borough? Um, it's made me a better writer. Hmm. Because I know, and it's not so much of what I'm up against, it's more so like for every victory is still a victory. The same way when one person in Detroit wins, Detroit wins. If M takes home a Grammy, Detroit takes home a Grammy. So Cardi took home, you know, best was it best hip hop album? Mm -hmm. The Bronx took home the best hip hop album. Not saying that it wasn't about Cardi, but you know, she is from the Bronx. So right. when you stand on that stage, you know, they everybody knows you're from the BX. So it's like you, for me, it's more so like, oh man, this person, this person just dropped a fire song, or this person just dropped a fire album. Word. Now I feel like writing. I like so it's, it's 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 motivating. It's insp inspiring, 
and it just makes me it just it just gives me a boost to 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 get back to the to the nitty gritty of it. I mean, yeah, Child Call Quest said that in um the last song of Midnight Marauders, where Fife was like, if Fife don't look good, the tip don't look good, the tip don't look good, the quest don't look good. I mean, he broke it down. If that since our side is universal, then New York won't look good. So it's like hip hop has always been the armor that we wear that shows not only where we're from, but our identity. Mm-hmm. I hate it always hearing we got to bring New York back because New York always had the identity of hip hop. But I thought it was, I took it as a smack in the face to artists like yourself and people who weren't on the radio who were doing hip hop the way hip hop was still going. How do you feel about that? Well, when, I mean, the thing is that when people say, Oh, we got to bring New York back. You gotta, people got to understand what they're, what, who they're putting face to face with. Okay. We got to bring New York. We got to bring New York back versus mainstream radio because we're in this tri-state bubble that's gonna keep feeding you the ten, the same, the same ten to twelve songs every couple minutes. So it was like, how do you bring something back when you're being force-fed this? And because we're dealing with the newer generation, oh, this is what's popping. Oh, we need to do this. So now you got more people, more sheep doing this instead of sticking to the truth or telling their truth or telling their story. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So as much as, as much as I would love for that sound to come back and, and that's another thing too. And is the sound never left. It's just, you're competing with mainstream media. You're competing with the corporations, the suits, the ties, the sound is there. It's always been there. It's never leaving, but there has to be a platform for that sound to be as relevant as the 10 to 12 songs that Hot 97 and 105.1 keeps force feeding us. So to a lot of people, that sound may be dead, but then again, there is a bigger world outside of the tri-state that we're in. That's why when artists go overseas, it's almost like being at home because the love and the respect for hip hop lives over there what we're supposed to be doing for it over here is being done across the world across the world and there are, there are places outside of once again the tri-state that still have that love for hip-hop that still have that love for lyricism we just think that it doesn't exist because we only know what how 97 is giving us or what 105.1 is giving us or what what or what media personality is going on their blog who's, who lives out here that is saying about lyricism or traditional hip hop. So of course you're going to take that and run with it because once one person says it, someone else says it because they're so in tune with, Oh, this is what's popping. Migos is popping. This is what you got to do. And this is what, um, this is what, this is what you got to do to succeed. Meanwhile, Tech Nine is the biggest independent artist there is ever. Businesses, ever. He, the guy has it all. Yeah, he does. And right behind him, Russ. And this is not to discredit Ari the Rugged Man or Insane Clown Posse or no one else, but these are successful independent artists that get respected by the majors. Mm-hmm. It's just that, you know, that. New York sound or that traditional hip hop sound is it's not dead and people just need to realize that it's not dead. It's just when you say that you're, you're putting that face to face with suits who are going to make sure you're getting the same 10 to 12 songs every couple minutes. Facts. But I think another major component of that is that ever since the shift away from New York hip hop in the early, like the mid 2000s. Mm-hmm. It a lot of the a lot of the things that are considered traditional hip hop kind of fell by the wayside. You took you took one of the MCs I interviewed on my 5% show which is Infinite 7 Mind. Salute to my bro. You know Just what I mean? If. Like he 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 it, he represents a, a a retelling of what already was which is the morals, the codes of traditional New York hip hop with a moral code as well. 
I want to ask you, being that you represent a lot of that moral code in your flow and style, what is it that you think is the voice of hip hop that people are not hearing when it comes to the music in the mainstream? The voice? Mm-hmm. Or mm -hmm. a voice? Yeah. Mm, that's a good question. It's hard. It's, it's kind of hard to answer that. Well, what are you looking to hear that you think is not being heard? Or, or people are not turning their ear to that's being said? Substance. You see, substance is very, um, that's broad. You know what I'm saying? Because substance comes with experience. And very if true. And if hip hop's always um, marketed as, it's always for the youth, which I think is bullshit. Um, if it's always marketed for the youth, then how could we look for substance if the substance is always being taken away? Very true. I I just think that as far as substance and, and that's you and then too is like a lot of these artists they 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 think that they have to they have to talk about this they have to talk about females twerking or calling calling them bitches or disrespecting them right and people might think that substance no i want to know your story what what was it like you know what was it like the second you woke up well how was it like in your household did you grow up with both your parents you probably didn't grow up with both your parents your father probably left you um and your mom to, to fend for self you know like everybody has a story yeah you just didn't come out rich right. how did you get there maybe if you lead me to that water then I drink it when I get there. But if you're just coming up to me with a cup of water, fam, I don't know you. <laughs> like, who are you? Who are you? Mm -hmm. So it, for me, it's it's when like substance, you know, your truth. Speak your truth. You can so, easily be a versatile artist and still do whatever it is that you think might work, but you you got to switch it up. So tell me what makes you nice. Because you took the Rakim joint to show the world mm. that you got substance. So why are you nice? <laughs> yeah, the crazy thing about that, right? Mm -hmm. um, I had dropped radio mm -hmm. with, um, that features my younger brother. And I'm like, well, I want so like, I've always loved that style of rap. Um, mm -hmm. Rakim, Kane. Mm -hmm. I love that, that, that. That particular flow mm -hmm. so then i'm like damn i've always wanted to get on that type of flow because it's like for them it wasn't so much like you gotta make sure you catch the bar you might miss it no kane and rock kim was their shit was just straight to the point like right there there's no need to to to, to jump around the ring now i'm just gonna punch you dead in your mouth and that's how that's how I look at, at their bars. It was just like direct punch you in your face. We let's not do the dancing. So, um, I was like, you know what? What if I took the the joint from Juice? I told my I told my dude family and they old famine, resample this and let's put it out. Yeah. So then I was like, well, another thing that I noticed was the choruses. It wasn't so like. It wasn't too too difficult to go about back then so i was like all right i'm just gonna keep it simple i'm nice another element dj scratches well i don't want to i don't want to sample someone else so i'll just send a dj my vocals and have him scratch yeah so it just sampled myself and it just i just i wanted that 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 feeling and when you heard it, it was like oh man this guy is giving me 90s vibes right now i feel like watching above the rim Jeez. So, yeah, so it's just, it's just, I just wanted to, I wanted when that song, I'm Nice, was more so like smooth, straight to the point, kill it. You don't got to hear some edge in my voice. I just want to humble tone, straight to the point, punch you straight in your mouth. I'm nice. And that was inspired by Rock Kim, Big Daddy Kane, just like that style of, of, of music. I like that because you know what? When I was listening to your projects, shout out to everybody who's watching Heritage Hip Hop. We were with Ray Pearson. And as you know, 
I don't listen to singles. I listen to projects to do my interviews. So we do real interviews. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So in studying your style, and it's funny how you said punch somebody in the mouth. I think you like combat sports. Am I correct? Yeah. yeah. I mean, I enjoy me a good UFC fight here and there. You have a very combat sport type style. If, if hip hop was a sport, what do you think your sport would be? Battle rap. Which is combat rap. <laughs> combat then, you know what I'm saying? And I want to get to one song in particular because your style seems more to me like boxing. Mm. It seems like you're going to give them the lyrics, but you're going to set them up for the punch when it comes to um, what you're saying. Yeah. And, um, I think that Rocky versus Apollo and Balboa mm. set that up. And that's why I was like, he got Rocky things. Rocky titles, but his style is more of a philanthropist. They're like a philanthropist. You're giving, you're giving them what they need, but then you're a pugilist because you're gonna knock them back with things they didn't expect. Right. Tell me about your, <laughs> tell me about your rhyme pattern and delivery. Oh, uh, um, how is like you said, it's 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 the setup. Like a lot of a lot of the bars are a stashed bars that I might think of on a random and I just, I, I, I put it away for when I need it. Um, so when writing or whether it's like a cypher verse, it's 16, right? Mm -hmm. So you got, it has to be a strong start. Mm -hmm. um, still keep it a bit strong by the fourth bar. Five and six is finding that opening on the body. Mm. Seven and eight, it's the hit. It's the hit that you're gonna feel that's gonna make. Oh, like, oh, he he didn't come here to play. He's about. Oh, he's here to really hurt me. Mm -hmm. Nine and ten, I'm just backing up, just letting you know, like, yo, this is not what you thought it was gonna be. Eleven and twelve, get ready because I'm is 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 I'm giving up for it. Thirteen and fourteen, now. I'm I'm studying where you what you're leaving open. Fifteen and sixteen, you're going down for the count. Hmm. You're the first artist that ever broke down how you how you box with bars. So, and judging I'm nice and judging Balboa, and then looking at mannequin and model chick, right? Mm. You're able to dance within those boundaries of how the beat gives it to you. So then, what's more important for you? The lyrical punch of the bar or the flow of the track to get somebody ready for the for, for the for the delivery. I guess that all really depends on um uh, what's the concept of the record, what record I'm dealing with. Um if it's something if it's something that's lyrical, then the gloves are off. This is and this is me versus Tommy Gunn. <laughs> Tommy we Gunn, are, huh? <laughs> yeah, we outside, we outside the, the, you know, we outside the bar and, and this is just, you know, there's, there's no rules when it's, when it's a lyrical track, but when it's something that has a bit more of a, like a, a mannequin or, or model, a model chick, it is all in flow, keeping them, keeping them tuned in and then sneaking, sneaking the grab hair, you know what I mean? Not to sound like Trump, but you know, sneaking... Uh, uh, uh. You know, sneak is something that's gonna that's gonna be like, oh snap! I didn't think he could do that on this, and it's just you know, like I'm, you know, I'm here, I'm I'm here getting groovy, it's just, you know. Don't think that this groovy doesn't have a shot of liquor in his system, <laughs> and that's and that's just you know, like just trying to, because I you could still if if you're good at what you do, and trust me, I'm not trying to sound cocky or anything, but if you're good at what you've worked on for so long. You should be able to know how to do certain things within certain songs so that it does not only is the song not dried, but you're not boring. Or you talk about you say something, you talk about something that has absolutely nothing to do with what's being heard. That's a very interesting concept because Ray Pearson on a song is 10 times a different animal than Ray Pearson on a cypher. Mm. So by going over the ground mode ciphers, right, right? You attack the microphone a little differently. And I don't think it's because of bar hook structure. I think it's different because 
is competitive against self versus competitive versus others. Can you break that down as an MC so that the people can understand how you go through that process instead of just making the song? Well, with ciphers, it's it's a display. You're displaying, you're displaying your art. It's a, it's an exhibit. You you know you're it's this is when you're your paintbrush. You gotta. This is like a, a imp, improv of what your paintbrush can do. So you know it's and that's another thing too. And I'm put it out there. These grime mode ciphers. You don't know who you're in a cipher with until maybe a couple of days before it's time to film. Nice. So now any any cipher anybody ever steps in it doesn't matter if you know who's on it or you don't know that's for you to be you mm. that's for you to yo it's time oh or y'all gonna like i even say oh we talking practice practice <laughs> so all right so since you have pressure me so much about it let me show you what happens so th- it, this is this is exactly what that is like cyphers is just this is showing off right mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And because hip hop is it is a competitive sport, you don't you want to be able to come off as still respectful towards whoever else is on a cipher, but you're not trying to be the weakest one in the cipher. Facts. So it not only it, yeah it is a competition from within self to push your pen and to push your limits, but also. You gotta let other people know. I'm like, yo, y'all, y'all know if y'all if, if I'm in a cipher with y'all, this has the same way I'm thinking. Y'all gotta think the same way. I'm not going. I'm I can't be I can't be weak on um, next to this rapper, but y'all gotta feel the same way. And, it, and at the end of the day, it's only gonna make the cipher better because we're all being seen. Now Ray Pearson also has been around people in the industry. You open up for Styles P, Joel Ortiz, mm-hmm. a whole bunch of names, right? Right. But I think that's I think that people in the game today are, t- are are tainted, and not because they're not good. I think because the cipher doesn't exist anymore on those realms, mm-hmm. and I think by, by losing the cipher, because what, what people do they call ciphers today, I don't call those ciphers. They're they're not ciphers in my in my opinion. Those are lyrical exercises, you know what I'm saying? Because to me, a cipher is when you're in a circle and you got to bring your best off the head more than one time and you really got to get it in. No disrespect right. to anybody who does cipher, salute to you and you be helping push the culture for it. My thing is, why do you think the cipher is now only ground level and entertaining at the top level when it was more meaningful back in the day? Um, egos. Oh, so people scared to get the egos hurt. Yeah. Um, especially if you're in there with a, with a with a young hungry savage of a of an MC, because it got it gets to a point where some some artists just feel like they're too good to to spit some bars, but then it's like if they know they step into and and that's another thing too camera phones, mm. because yeah. if you if you put someone if someone decides to, you know. Shoot around with the with the with the with the the kids in the park, and it comes out on video that oh snap, there's this rapper killing it, and he killed it more than such and such. What you think is gonna happen? Now that rapper, that industry head is gonna be getting interviewed about this one rapper who showed up and just. Spit probably the illest lines anybody online has ever heard. Unless that rapper was smart enough to use it for marketing and sign that person. That's what's missing. There you go. It, it's, it's like if if you find someone hot, sign them. Why do you got to wait for, for that person to bubble maybe 2,000 miles from here when it's like, yo, like, you probably see you probably see yourself a younger version of yourself in this artist, and you just let that person slip through your fingers because you felt threatened. Yeah. If anything, you have you have the experience to guide this artist. You don't see Fifty saying, "Oh, I'm better than M." That's a good point, you know. But I think what it comes down to is the realism and the reality of life is missing from the entertainment of hip-hop now that everything is just a dream 
when you go on Instagram, everybody's perching, twerking, and busting it. You know what right. I'm saying? And, Very uh, true. Uh, and, and now we living in a time where we have capital riots. We have um, we have presidents um, firing people from the military because they're afraid of getting assassinated. We have Black Lives Matter versus Antifa versus the Proud Boys versus the Oath Keepers versus the Three Percenters. And even recently now we found out we have the Democrats versus the Democrats versus the Republicans versus QAnon. So hip hop has always taken that reality stance and telling people what the world is and now it's being ciphered down to what the fantasy of life should be. Why do you think as an MC it's important for you to always talk about reality and not just focus on the fantasy? Because people love to sweep what's happening under a rug as if it doesn't exist. And, you know, it affects what's going on in the world affects everybody. Mm. You know, families are being deported, ripped apart. Kids are sleeping in cages. You know, yeah. like, how do you sweep that under the rug? If what if that was maybe your niece and your nephew? Yeah. And getting raped, you know, sleeping in a cage, yeah. covering themselves with a with an aluminum blanket on yeah. not even not. I don't even think I think prisoners get better beds than what these kids have been sleeping on. Disgusting. And kids have gone missing under um, ice supervision. You know, this is you know, these things are happening. Mm -hmm. It's not a I don't care about what car you just bought. Mm -hmm. You know, this is this is what's happening. This could be, you know, this could be one of your 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 siblings, one of your kids, one of your cousins. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, you're how is it how you know how would it feel if you drop your kid up to school knowing you're not legal and your kid comes out of school, where's mommy? Where's daddy? Meanwhile, mommy or daddy is somewhere by the border or wherever ICE takes everybody. So it's like, you know, these things are happening. Mm -hmm. These yeah. things are these things are these people are these people ran into that 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 building. I only saw there might have been more than one um, black cop, but I saw one cop versus a bunch of people. And he was backing up, and he looked dolo. Like, who's to say them people didn't snatch him and throw him down the stairs and stomp them out on his way down the stairs? Like, these things are really happening. I don't care about what you, what jewelry you bought. I don't care about what how much your chain costs. It's funny that you say that because in your new single and video "Riot," which is out right now on YouTube, everybody make sure you go check that out. Yeah. You even you even address that before the video comes on. Mm -hmm. and I had then, to. And then the first image that comes up is Bane with the shovel, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Now, let's be real. Bane in the Batman movie represented the upheaval of previous thoughts. And the Capitol riots was not that. It was the upheaval of people wanting power because they felt they lost it. What do you think is the power of hip-hop? And what do you think has been lost or taken from hip-hop? Um, I think too many people, I think people let the wrong hands get into the jar. Mm. And once that happened, it lost a bit of credibility mm. because what they thought and what they probably got tricked into thinking they would benefit from it really wasn't. And it was just bait so that the ties and suits can control what originated from the streets. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And, and the thing about riots, um, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I put that disclaimer in the beginning of the video because like it starts off, it was filmed on the first and the breach happened a couple days later. And because of certain things in the video, like the, the blue and red lights, um the title itself and just the energy of the song i didn't want it to make it seem like oh i'm going to i'm going to take advantage of what's happening yeah. and use it to my advantage or you know like a marketing scheme mm -hmm. and i didn't want it to be tied to that because once again 
this is something that happened days before the breach and I didn't want I didn't want that type of attention. That's not what I wanted. That because that to me that wouldn't have been real for me. Let it organically hmm. let it organically go out on its own and not some because for me that would have been negative energy. Like I could have used it to my advantage if I wanted, but for me that would have been negative energy. Energy that I I definitely would not have welcomed. But isn't that your responsibility as an artist is to let the world know what's going on because you are the pulse of the people who are not getting heard. Don't you feel, do you feel that way? Yeah, but the song had nothing to do with what was going on. It was more, it was more so I took a situation that happened on my comments Mm -hmm. and um, I turned that into a full blown song. Like, you know, some, something that happened in my personal life right. inspired the song in a way. So if had it been something where it has something to do with it, then it probably would have been um, executed differently. But um, riots had in no way, shape or form had anything to do with what's, um, what ha- was going on. But in some ways it does. And I'm going to tell you why. Because unfortunately, the thing that we don't understand about hip hop is that hip hop is a spiritual living um, living essence. And it's not our music. It's our lifestyle and our culture. And the one thing about life is that it's ever, ever evolving. So any one song can mean so many things. And though it was a comment in something that, that somebody may have brought an idea of attention to, it was supposed to come out at this time because the message of the video was a microcosm of what's going on in our world. And you being an MC is so deliberate because the average person will say you make music. The above average person will say you're lyrical. Mm. The experienced person would say he's a reporter and either he's gonna tell you about his life, life itself or the soul of the soul essence of life that's getting attacked. So One of my main questions to you that I wanted to ask you after listening to most of your music is this. What is the part of hip hop you preserve and always want to be remembered for doing? Um, You love my questions, don't you? Hell yeah. (laughs) Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Without hesitation, hell yeah. Um... (laughs) I just, what I want to be remembered for is... um, Not your legacy, just a part of hip-hop that people, when they look at you, they know they respect you for doing that. Not dumbing it down. See, and that's important. That's why why I asked you that question, because you would be what I would call your top-tier MC waiting to be heard. And you have a lot of average MCs being heard. So I don't think that I don't think that's the most frustration. The most frustrating thing to a listener is that when people say I don't like hip hop because everybody speaks the same thing and I introduce them to you, they go, oh, and they get that aha boom. <laughs> As a teacher, we call that the teachable moment because there's nothing like when you have a student and they finally get it and they're proficient. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And when people say, all I hear is mumble rap, but all I hear is this, so all I hear is that, and I could, could put on a Ray Pearson and others, then it's like, oh, this still is out there, or I did not know. And now that you know, how do you take care of it? How does that affect you? It's um, it's inspiring. It's um, validating. Um, it def- it's definitely inspiring because it is like you know if once once that reaction happens and it's a and it's a positive reaction it's like you know like you know this just makes me feel good about not giving in and doing what everyone else is doing so that's how that's how I usually take that and and, and go from there and you know, and some 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 people actually reach out and they, and you know, they give me the props and it's like, thank I like I appreciate it more than what you think, you know, more than what you can actually read. And I promise not to disappoint. 
So everybody out there, make sure that you don't disappoint yourself. Go out there and get some good music. And Ray Pearson has not only great flow, he has good music and great music as well. Tell them how to contact you, social media, and how to get your music as well. Definitely. Um, all my music is on all digital streaming platforms. You know, whatever your poison is, um, Tidal, Spotify, Apple Music, Deezer, um, iHeart, you know, whatever, whatever you think, you know, SoundCloud, YouTube, whatever your poison is, my music is there. Um, you can follow me on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter at It's Ray Pearson. Or you can head over to itsraypearson.com. Check out the music. Check out the merchandise. Check out all everything. The videos are there. The ciphers are there. The promos are there. Everything is there for you to, to, to take in. Disclaimer. For everybody who watches Heritage Hip Hop, you know what I'm about to say. But for those of you who don't, Heritage Hip Hop does not believe in streaming. We believe that if there's an artist out there that you really love, spend the money on their music because you're guaranteeing yourself more music and you're sowing into the life of the artist that took their time to create the music. If Godzilla went through New York City and New Jersey right now and knocked down every building and the internet disappeared, if you do not buy Ray Pearson's music, you do not have Ray Pearson's music. So you make go. sure you go out there and you spend the money. I don't care if it's a dollar for a single or $12 for an album. Please support our artists because our artists is what makes our culture great. You agree? Definitely agree. All right. Definitely agree. And with that being said, we close out the first part of this interview. And now it's time for a game that we call the Rapid Fire Questions. Are you ready to play this game with me? <laughs> I know the choice. Let's go. All right. Well, the Rapid Fire Questions are not yes, no questions. These are questions that show your depth of knowledge and knowledge of the hip-hop culture. You ready to begin? Uh, yeah, I guess so. He don't know what he just started. All right, everybody. <laughs> Here we go. For you, I made new questions. Um... I'm going to ask you some of the regular questions. I don't know if you've seen one of our interviews before, but for you, I put in some different questions and I wanted to talk to your ethnicity, your intelligence, and your understanding of hip hop. You are a person of Hispanic um, origin. Yes. America disrespects Hispanic people on a large basis, especially when they call you Latin X, where Hispanics are more than just Puerto Rican, Dominican, and Mexican. And that's what mm -hmm. America um, likes to, you know, categorize. To show the depths of the culture, I want to put it in a hip hop question. How has Hispanic culture made hip hop rich besides break dancing so that people know that there's so much more that the game has gotten from Hispanic origin? Wow. And um, I was just about ready to say that. I'm, I was just about ready to say my answer, but the way I worded it um, in my head, it would definitely have came out arrogant. Um, <laughs> oh, that's a difficult thing to answer because because of the answer that I had, it was just, how has Hispanics made hip hop rich? Yeah. Besides, everybody, when they think of Hispanic people, they think of just break dancing. But there are MCs, DJs, food, clothing. There's so much that has been given from our brothers from another side of the earth that makes hip hop hip hop. What do you think? Um, how how has it been enriched in your um your understanding of it? Besides people just doing the upstep. Well, the thing is, I think for a long time Hispanics have been overlooked by the um by hip hop. Um, because a lot of people think hip hop is is only black, right. where Puerto Rican or well Hispanic. I don't want to just say Puerto Ricans. I don't want to get that wrong. But Hispanics is as important to the roots of hip hop as blacks are. Mm -hmm. Um, even in Beach Street, the the crew you have Ramo. Yeah. So Hispanics have been part of that root for hip hop. Just like blacks are there, Hispanics are there. So because Hispanics feel so overlooked by hip hop, um, we the, the the opportunity that's been given to Hispanics, they've jumped on it because they still have the knowledge 
that's been there since the very beginning. So they cap um they capitalize on that, and that's why that that information they've been able to 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 gain from it. I like how you said that because I think Hispanics have given to the root of the music just as much as the West Indies gave to the drum. Mm. You know, I mean, it was kind of ironic. People started sampling Hector Laveau out of nowhere. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. But that music has been so dope that it's always going to be an underlying current that you can't turn off. You know what I'm saying? My next question coming from that is this. Big pun is seen as the most eloquent, well-spoken of Hispanic hip hopper. Besides him, what other Hispanic MCs touched your life or you think people should know about that they may not have listened to yet or don't acknowledge? Um, Chris Rivers. Yeah, that's one. Um, I'm probably biased by saying this, um, but Cuban Link. Cuban Link was nice. Um, Fab is Dominican. Shout out to Fab. Let's go. Um, so Bodega was, Bams. He had his nice run. Yeah. Um, who no, else? Um, no panties. Yeah, no panties. Yeah. <laughs> Nitty, Nitty Scott. Yes, it's dope. Yeah. Um, Joel Ortiz. Yep. Um, who else? Um, my verse. You. Thanks. I mean, I wasn't going to say I wasn't going to say <laughs> I'm going to say it. Let's go. <laughs> Thank you. Um, yeah, I'm probably, I'm probably, I'm probably, I'm probably forgetting a name. Um, Duchess, she, she's done. She's gotten into battles, but she's a, she, you know, she's really a dope ass artist. Uh -huh. If people um, took the time to listen to her music, mm -hmm. not that it's not out there because it is out there. Mm -hmm. um, that's all that. That's all that's coming to um the beat nuts. And and this is just me um saying, you know, mentioning artists mm -hmm. who are Hispanic that you know that they they they've done something in hip hop. Yeah. Yeah. And I mean and and I'm not gonna I'm not gonna keep it there for this interview, but I wanted to show respect to another side of the culture that is not talked about enough. Now we have the West Indians fighting for respect. And I think that's I think that's corny that we have to do this. We should just all be honored. But I want to mm -hmm. give every flag and every soil its respect because they did put in. You know what I'm saying? Right. So now that we got off of that, Ray Pearson is an MC though. And Ray Pearson has to know music to do music, correct? And so yeah. Okay. <laughs> So define music in five albums. Oof. Define music in five albums. Five albums. Uh Illmatic. Okay. Um are we talking personal favorites? Whatever you do, it's your interview. Whatever you like. All right. I would say Illmatic. Mm -hmm. Ready to die. Mm -hmm. Um Reasonable Doubt. Mm -hmm. Let me see. Hold up. Hold up. Hold up. Hold up. Um. Mm. These last two of the these last two is gonna be a bit. Gonna be a bit rough, because this is coming from a place of what I you know what I took from these albums. Um. One moment, hold up. <laughs> Oof. While he's thinking, everybody remember to subscribe to Heritage Hip Hop on YouTube. Hit the notification bell, like, comment, and share this video. Also, follow us at heritagehiphop.com where members of the website get free music and you get artist profiles as well. Salute. Um, I would say Eternia and Moss at last. Okay. Nice. Um, one more. One more. Yep. Mm, um, and this is this is a biased answer. Sure. The Slim Shady LP. 
Okay, that's very eclectic. I'm going to ask you this. And hearing those albums, every album has a different production style. Right. I'm going to ask Ray Pearson this question. What's the perfect beat? Meaning, if the person never came out with that beat and that song, it would have been your first single. What beat would that be? It would probably have been um, um, Nas, New York State of Mind. Which you have a song called New York State of Mind on one of your projects, correct? I do. <laughs> That's right. I mean, it was it wasn't the Nas joint, but if <laughs> it's you know that that my New York State of Mind was celebrating and you know championing where I come from, where Nas's New York State of Mind is a story. That's exactly, crazy. and That's and crazy. so you know. That's you know, salute to Nas. All salute day. to Nas. Uh, I gotta ask you this because I've heard you steal a song from somebody. I'm not putting no names out there. There, there is a, there is, there is a um a, a, a album out with Ray Pearson on it where the main artist invited him to be on a track and you forgot who did the track. <laughs> I'm not gonna say no names. Oh wow! Yeah. Yeah, I'm taking it there. You had a guest 16 or a feature that that stole the show. I want to ask you as an MC, looking at other MCs. Well, I, I think I know what you're talking about. Good. <laughs> I think I know what you're talking about. I'm going to ask you as an MC that studies other MCs, who has the greatest guest 16 or feature in hip-hop history? Mm. Oof. Man, it all really depends, honestly. Okay, um, they could be, you know, no, no. I'm gonna come from a place of being of of, of bias. Okay, I'm gonna say pun. On what song? Um, you got um. Wait, what's the name of that song? Uh, what would you do if you could do the unbelievable? There was a there was a cup on um, John Blaze punt killed. Okay. Um, John Blaze was better than banned from TV. Nah, you see these. these <laughs> this, nah, you see that. Uh, nah, it's John, just that John Blaze was better than the um, horse and carriage remix. Mmm. Mm. <laughs> Let's talk mm. about that for a second. You think that's better, yo? <laughs> Shut them down with Onyx remix. Hmm. Man, nah. <laughs> I'm sorry. I, I thought you meant so like who? Not much more than which one? Because I would who, just say, who? yeah, who? who? Well, I mean, Pun jumped on Pun when Pun was featured on shit. It was different. It was a, yeah, it was a drag fest. It was different. Um, you think nobody? You think nobody gave Pun equal standing? Like like nobody could get on track and flow with Pun. And it was um, like equal. Black Thought. Black Thought killed that joint. And Fat Joe slept on him and didn't even want to put him on the album, which is crazy. Yeah, no, Black Thought definitely he 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 was there with Pun. I'm gonna ask you a question as an MC. Did you ever hear the le the le the legend of the big pun versus Jadakiss track? Are we um the for some reason there's two answers to this. Okay. Like my answer is, is is two answers. Okay. You got my answer. One would be if you're talking about what they told us, or the actual what we don't know, because I heard Jada's verse. I was like, nah, no, there's no way that that verse was done at the time of the original song, because of what Jada was saying in his bars, it just sounded too. Too updated, okay. Not so much as a young Jada, okay. Well, the legend was that Pun loved Jada so much that they did a meth versus chef where they battled each other on a track, mm. and that was supposed to come out on the first album, but it didn't. Mm. We also have the story of the twins album that never came out with Biggie and Fat Joe as the twins. And that was supposed to bring certain elements to the table that we just didn't get. Right. Those are dream tracks. You know what I'm saying? 
My question is, what would be your dream track? Who would you do a song with? Or who would who would produce it, dead or alive, no restrictions? I mean, I said this in, in interviews. My dream track would be um for right now it'd be Chris Rivers. Really? This all right, so this is a crazy story. Yeah, tell and, me. And 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 the the producer I'm gonna name is the actual producer who would actually produce it. Okay. So this is back when Chris was um baby pun. Okay. There was a song I did where I got a pun verse. So I had my dude put a beat together to the verse so that we could present it to Liza. Okay. And it was like, you know, let's try to present it to Liza to get her blessing and maybe try to, you know, let's see what we could pull with baby pun. Right. I just so happened to know someone that used to smoke with her. Okay. So he calls me one day. He's like, yo, I'm right here with Liza. And I've had conversations with Liza, just me and Liza, mm-hmm. way before that conversation. Mm-hmm. So he puts her on the phone. So she's telling me she heard the song and that they were talking about it and that they want to redo the song mm-hmm. with me on it, of course. Me, okay. um, Chris, and have that pun verse um, come in at the end. Mm. And who would produce it is arsonist of the heat makers. Heat makers are like top two, top three, right after pr- um, premiere. Okay. So my dream song would be with Chris Rivers, produced by the Heat Makers. That would be very interesting. Salute to you, Chris Rivers, Arsonist, and his mom for for for. Hopefully, that could come out on a big level, you know? That would be great. I have three more questions for you. Then we're going to close out the interview, all right? All right. Um, my next question is this, because I think this is very pivotal to who Ray Pearson is rather than what people think hip-hop is, all right? What song or album perfectly describes you from another artist's catalog? That's a real good question. Mm. Wow, that's a good question. Um, in a way, it's almost like I feel like I haven't heard that album yet. There, there are songs here and there, mm-hmm. um, that may tap me on the shoulder, but I haven't came across that album yet. It's just pieces of the puzzle that's scattered throughout my journey of artists that I've listened to, um, albums that I've listened to, but uh, there's not a, a defining album that I can honestly mention. So what song do you think is, is the closest? I, um, in a way, hmm, the closest. And it's, all right. So there's one song, and it's not so much of the song, but more so the pen behind it. Mm-hmm. I want to say Tupac, um, Brenda Got a Baby, or Brenda Had a Baby, something like that. Brenda um, Got a Baby, yeah. Yeah, and it's not so much of the song. It's more so... The storytelling, the art of storytelling, which that is definitely something that I feel has been lost in hip hop today. And that is definitely something that I love doing. Like I was that kid in class when you got the essay, you had to take a picture and create an essay from it. You got you got the full story in detail by me. Like I was I was the one person in class. All right, now you just changed the interview. I got two more questions. <laughs> I'm going to add one over what you just said. What is the greatest story rap of all time, then? The greatest story rap of all time? One story rap track that you listen to, and it's like, you there. The greatest story rap ever. Ooh. Um, mm, there's too many. There's like, there's like so many. Um, yeah, you only get one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> The greatest story rap 
of all time. Of all time. That's right. Mm. Oof, man, that that is that is a tough one because there's a there's a lot of great storytelling songs. Um, mm. like there's there's a there's a few like like there. It's kind of it was a little difficult to break down which one. <laughs> All right, give me three. What's your top three story rhymes? I want to say there's damn I forgot the name of the Nas joint. Um, we want a second childhood rewind. Uh, those are the two ones. Um, I, I gave you power. Uh, wait, that I gave you power is the gun one, right? Yeah, that's definitely. That's definitely up there. Okay. Um, storytelling, storytelling. Um, I think, and it's and it's not, like the 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 ones I'm I'm gonna say is not so much that they triumph over a lot other stories songs. Uh-huh. It's just these just happen to be songs that when I heard them, I kept listening to them because they were at the at the time. I was like, damn, you're like, he executed that perfectly. Um, there's a Logic song. I think it's called, was it Street Dreams 2? Okay. And that, like, from beginning to end, like, how how he how he dove into that into that storytelling when, like, his his wife had got kidnapped, but really, it was really him. Like, it was, the the way that he, he, he executed that was just really dope. Okay. Um, Storytelling, storytelling. Um, mm, um, see, there's a there's a couple in my head right now for DMX. Um, oh, yeah, he has a couple. Mm, Just give me I, one. I want to say it's from it's from the first one. Oh um, my. I, I didn't want to go with um, is it Damien? That's an interesting story. Okay, all right. We'll we'll end it right there. We'll end it right there. Everybody out there loves hip hop. Get your story wrap up for real. We might we might have Heritage Hip Hop put out a, a a new playlist called the Artist Storytelling Part One. Stay tuned though. So um, I always thought you like combat sports because of how you rhyme and some of the titles of your songs, right? Right. But you got a song over the Goldberg beat. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm like, this guy over here doing some WCW, right? Yeah. <laughs> so that so that made so that made me think because Goldberg was he sucked in my aspect, but I, you know, whatever. But the link about Goldberg was he had a streak. He was that powerhouse that everybody was afraid to run into because he ran through them and destroyed them in the ring. Right. How does Ray Pearson, the MC, reflect Goldberg, the athlete? Um, being undefeated. Well, you know, not, let, let me not put that out there because I've only lost one battle, and that's because that's because I had to leave. So it was just like, oh well, he won. I was like, wait, what? Um, but you know, that's an L that. I salute my big brother for it, so I'm not even I won't even be salty about that. Okay. Um, but yeah, being undefeated, um, people feeling like they can't maybe not work with me because they think it's just gonna be a lyrical onslaught. I think they get this 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 um this idea that I'm just always competitive and I'm just out here to just outwrap the world. <laughs> So I, I in in a way I feel like like you said like people people are sometimes afraid to to you know stand on um you know on the other side looking at you know who they who they in the same room with. Okay, I respect that. Well, ladies and gentlemen, we thank you for watching our interview with Ray Pearson. Um, like I said, he's the lyrical translator. That whenever you hear a beat, he's going to tell you what the beat says through his gift of lyrics and delivery. And um, 
before we go to that last question, how'd you like your interview? Give them a, give them a testimony of how you felt about this interview, man. Let me tell you something, man. I've done a lot of interviews. I've expressed on many occasions that I've disliked the format of interviews. And I think that that falls on whoever's doing the interviews, the lack of care. They'll read a five sentence paragraph and interview you based off of five sentences. This is one of those interviews that I was not expecting. And that just goes to show this was amazing. Amazing. And I appreciate every question that you answered and it's left me speechless. And it's those type of interviews that still that that's missing. So thank you, man. Thank you. Oh, no, nah, man. I, I appreciate it. Like I said in the um, beginning, I can't interview you if I don't listen to your music. So I thank you for sharing your gift with the world. Thank you for giving me the opportunity to present this interview to you. And I'm, I'm happy I met or surpassed your expectations. So thank you very much. With that being said, everybody, now it's time for the final question of the first interview. And I say first because we are not a bougie platform where you got to have a top five song to be on. As long as you have something that you want to promote or you want to talk about, Heritage Hip Hop doors are always open. We schedule it and we make it happen. So with that being said, the last and most important question of the first interview is a rehashing of something I asked you earlier, which is 500 years from now when the Hip Hop Museum is open in the Bronx, which opens like next year, next year, whatever. And yeah. um, and, and a child goes up to um, their father or mother and says, who is Ray Pearson? And they push that red button and your hologram comes out and they play your music. What is the legacy that you leave behind that made the world better because you did hip hop music? Spoke my truth. I was a voice. I was a voice for someone who wasn't strong enough to to voice their their feelings, their emotions, their stress, their happiness, their sadness. I want to be that. And throughout and throughout my journey, I want to be able to still make it okay to to be free to express your art, your voice. Your voice is art. Your life is art. How you paint that canvas is totally up to you. But tell your truth, no matter how the world sees it, how you see it is what we need to understand. Mm, so everybody out there, remember, it's always gracious and it's always a blessing to be truthful because you don't want anybody else to tell your story. The greatest story ever told is the one you live. So being truthful not only gives the world you, it gives the world a light to shine that you do shine to be better within itself. So with that being said, this is Karev of Heritage Hip Hop with the lyrical translator, Ray Pearson. And we say peace and we out. Thank you for watching our presentation. We ask that you subscribe to our YouTube family and hit the notification bell for updates. Please like, comment, and share this video.